Hey everyone, welcome back to Body Haven Soaps. Uh, my name is Darlene and I am the owner and creator of Body Haven Soaps. And on this channel we go over products, ingredients, recipes, formulas, how to create formulas and how to design your own recipes. If that's something that interests you, please feel free to subscribe. Um, I've done a number of videos lately on the formulating and things like that. Um, but it's a lot of talking and that can get a little boring so I've decided since I am in the process of making some bath salts that I will bring you a recipe today all right so I'm making these for a birthday party so I'm making them in tubes and they'll be labeled with the birthday girls name on them and all those other kind of things it's a private order but I decided this is a good opportunity to show you guys how I go about making my bath salts. Now, when you think about bath salts, we think, oh, that's pretty simple, right? Um, have you guys ever made bath salts and they just turn to that block? They, they seize and stick together, things like that. So there's simple tips and tricks that you can to make sure that that doesn't happen, that it stays loose in the package that it flows nicely out of the container, that it's scoopable, and it doesn't turn to that brick or clumpy or it's over greasy, those types of things. So it took me a while to figure it out, you know, and sometimes it's the simplest things that we make that take the longest. Uh, bath bombs took me, I think I practiced for two years um, before I finally got bath bombs to where I thought it was a sellable product. So. Um, once again, salt kind of falls under that same thing. Didn't take me as long, but there is little tips and tricks. So that's what we're going over. Um, just a quick update, you guys, um, on what's going on with recovering from the flood. We are still waiting for our inspection for our basement. So that hopefully is happening this week. And then we can start um, getting drywall and stuff up, but that just hasn't happened yet. And we're being as patient as we can, but I am getting there. Um, so far we have cleaned up everything in the yard as far as fencing all that kind of stuff we did get our sod in so my dog as you can see in the picture i'll show you here is going to be extremely happy the fact that he has grass again um, the mud and we put down gravel it just wasn't great for him so he is going to be so happy in about two weeks when we can let him loose on the grass and he can play and roll and all those kinds of things so that is what we worked on um, so far, other than just some other upkeep and stuff. But we are getting there one step at a time. Um, there's just so much going on for a lot of people. It's just a, it's a challenging time for sure. All right. Um, I want to say a thank you to all of my Patreons. And for my Patreons, this recipe with percentages um, and everything else is going to be in that Patreon um, along with a number of other recipes that I uploaded last week. So thank you for your support and I greatly appreciate that. And for everybody that watches my channel, thank you for hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. It greatly helps me um, build this channel and keep being able to bring this content to you. All right, let's get to the bath salts, you guys. So bath salts are pretty straightforward in most cases. I mean, usually we have our salts and there is many different kinds of salts we can get. This is a Himalayan salt. Um, and we can get s salt in different sizes as well. So we have our, this is um, small Himalayan salts. You can get fine Himalayan salts. We've got a medium Himalayan salts here. And here in this bag here, I have Himalayan salts that are large chunks, okay? Um, and you can get all different types of sizes and shapes of salt to add different characteristics um, to your salt blends. So, you know, um, you've got your pure ocean salt. What else do I have here? Um, sea salt, I have coarse and I have fine. And then I have Epsom salt and I get those in, in small, medium and large as well because I make different things and different characteristics that I bring to different salt products that I make, especially if I'm customizing a product for somebody. The one salt that you do want to make sure that you're using in your salt recipe is the dendritic salt. Um, it is, it's got tons of different edges to it. It's almost like a star shape. So is what they say. I've never looked at it through a microscope, but it holds a vast amount of moisture. So when it sucks it into there, it 
prevents your salt from becoming all rock solid and stuff like that and helps keep it in that looser form and it holds that fragrance oil and the carrier oils that we need to put into our salts to be able to make the bath salts. Um, another option that you could do is the Nutrisorb. Um, I've tried it before. It is a great product. It just depends on what you want to bring into your properties. I tend to stick with the salt, so I'll use the dendritic salt um, over the Nutrisorb. Um, just because it's a more natural product, but the choice is there. But either of those products will work to prevent that, to help prevent um, your salts from sticking together and becoming rock solid, okay? So I'm just going to move these salts out of my way here and we're gonna go over um, percentages and how I go about making this. Okay guys, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have our little empty container and a spatula here. I'll move this closer so you can see. Um, and the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna put in our um, dendritic salt or Nutrisorb, whichever you are using, okay? Um, you need something to hold on to that fragrance oil and the carrier oil. Now, if I'm using fragrance oil or I'm using an essential oil, I need to have a carrier oil in here. It's kind of important, you guys. Um, we need to dilute that slightly. And I also will use polysorbate 80 because I don't want, especially if I'm using um, essential oils and things like that, I don't want the little oil particles to be floating around the bathtub and come have straight essential oils on somebody's skin that can cause irrit irritation and things like that. So I want to use that polysorbate 80 to disperse it into the water so that it actually dilutes and it is a proper concentration for skin safety. So the first thing that we're going to add into this is going to be our dendritic salt or if you're using the Nutrisorb, you want to add that in first, okay? So I have 200 grams of the dendritic salt and you guys I will use this you know as my base to absorb my oils and uh, all of my liquids so this goes in first so I'm going to put in 200 grams I'm making a 1500 gram batch okay so we put in that salt I will also put in 50 grams of baking soda the baking soda, as it blooms and it goes through, it helps absorb and hold on to this. You could also use, um, you know, a cornstarch or anything like that. I find baking soda, um, a lot of people are acceptant to having that into their bath water. So I'm using baking soda, 50 grams. And the first thing I want to do is I want to mix this all together, make sure there's no lumps in the baking soda. Um, and I just kind of press it down and make sure all the lumps are out, smush it all together. Okay, so now we have all of that in there. Once you have those two ingredients in there, you guys, this is where we're going to add, add, add in our fragrance oil. Um, I have 20 grams of fragrance oil and I have 10 grams of the polysorbate 80 in here, okay? And I'm going to put this in. And this, I'm making my flower child bath salts. So polysorbate 80 and fragrance oil. And I always mix those two together before I add them in. Okay? And I will also add in my carrier oil. Now the carrier oil that I'm choosing to use is hemp seed oil. So it's a little bit green and it may change the color um, because this is non-refined. It may change the color of your salt slightly, um, but I don't find it to be that big of a difference. But I love hemp seed oil in my salt, so that is why I use it. And for the carrier oil, I have 30 grams of hemp seed oil. And now we're just going to mix this all up and make sure all the powders and salts get all well combined and give that salt a minute and the baking soda to absorb all those oils. So you can see this looks like a lot, um, as you can see, but it is going to absorb all in there. And I'm not making a huge batch like I normally would. I just don't have 
um, all of my stuff set up yet, but this is a specific order that somebody asked for that I'm working on. But you can see that this is quite goopy, okay? And that's okay, don't pack. We're gonna set this aside for about five minutes and just let this soak in, okay? We want it to absorb into that salt and the baking soda. And for the fragrance oil in this one, you guys, I am using a lemon, lemongrass uh, verbena, verbena, however you say that, um, from Windy Points. That is the fragrance oil I use for my flower child. I love that smell um, or scent. I just find it very fresh and awakening. All right, so now once we have this all mixed, we let this sit for about five minutes, guys. Um, Okay, so about five minutes has passed. We are going to add in the rest of our salts. So in total for the rest of the salts, you guys, um, I have 1,200 grams for the rest of the salts. I have sea salt, Himalayan salts, dead sea salts, and some Epsom salts. Now Epsom salts, you guys, you wanna add in um, actually a lower ratio. I find the more Epsom salts I put in, um, the more clumpy the mixture gets. So I do like Epsom salts in there um, for the magnesium and stuff, but we have plenty of other salts in here that have the magnesiums and other minerals that are brought into this. So I'm going to put in um, coarse sea salt, and you guys, whatever salt blend you want, um, but you're going to do 1,200 grams of additional salt. I also have our Himalayan salts that I'm going to add in here for a little bit of color and Himalayan salts have some great minerals that they bring to this. And then I have my dead sea salt and my pure ocean salt that I've added in here. So 1200 grams in total. And you guys, you're just gonna mix this until it's well combined, okay? Sometimes it's easier to just get in here with your hand and do this. But you wanna just make sure it's all combined really well. This smells amazing. All right, so now that I have this all mixed in here and it's mixed really well, you can see that's quite moist, right? But I like the oils in my salts. Um, you know, anybody can just go buy salts and put them in the bathtub. So I like to make mine extra moisturizing and conditioning to the skin so that people really enjoy that bath time, okay? So you can see they're quite wet. If I was just to pack these into a jar with essential, with my um, herbs and stuff, my herbs would turn all brown and gross and it wouldn't work and this would become um, basically a salt block. Okay, so what we want to do now that I have it like this is I'm going to take a cookie sheet that I've covered in foil. And I cover it with foil because these are cookie sheets I use just for my soap company. I've just bought some new ones. And I just get these from the dollar store, you guys. It's nothing special. It's something I can put in the oven to hold stuff. And they're only used for my soap company. But um, when you put things into an oven, they tend to bake the scent in there and then it transfers to the next product you make. So I just cover it with some aluminum foil and I put my salt all onto that sheet. Okay, and then I just wanna spread them out, right? So just spread them out so that they can all be nice and evenly toasted, so to say. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna take this and I have my oven at 170. If, it's, if your oven only goes to 200, but you just want it at the lowest setting possible, these will burn and you do not wanna burn the fragrance oil off um, or overheat those oils that we put in there to break them down so then we lose the properties we're trying to bring to this. So I have my oven set at 170 Fahrenheit and I'm gonna put this in there for 15 minutes and I'm gonna stir it every five minutes. And this will turn this into a powder. It only takes 15 minutes, low temperature. It's just to, the salt kind of seizes um, on there, okay? So 
I will do that and then we'll be back. Okay guys, I did another batch. Um, well, I was waiting for that one and I got them both through the oven. So this, I did this just because I wanted to show you the color difference. This is the one that I used the hemp seed oil in. You can see it's kind of got that yellowish tinge to it. So this is my flower child salt, okay? And this is my lavender salts where I just used um, apricot kernel oil. So you can see um, the color difference there. So depending on what type of oil you use will change the color of your salt slightly. All right, so these both were in the oven for 15 minutes. Okay, um, now you guys don't get tempted to turn it up um, or anything like that. Salt is, you know, it's an amazing thing. When we heat it up, it, it, this transformation happens and it turns that oil into um, crystals. So it works wonderfully. As you can see, this is kind of chunky. Um, so what I want to do, now that I've got it like this, I'm going to put it into a container. If you guys, oh, one thing I should add, you guys, if you wanted to color this, color it before you put it in the oven. I don't didn't put colorants in either of these, um, but you can absolutely use a colorant in there. Put it in before the oven if you wanted to actually color them purple or pink or, or whatever you're looking for, okay? Okay, so what we're gonna do, guys, is these are completely cooled as well. You wanna allow them to completely cool um, for a while, you guys. Make sure there's no heat left in them because if you do package them too soon, um, they actually release a gas. It's, you need to let them gas off. Otherwise, if you ever put salts in a bag and had the bag swell up, that's because they were gassing off. You have to let them cool completely. All right, we're gonna put this into a container. Now that we have this all into a container like this, and this is the one that had the hemp seed oil in it, I'm just going to go through and rub my hands together to break up the clumps that were in there so that I don't have big ugly looking chunks. I want it to look even. Okay, now that I have that all nice and even tone, in this one I do put in, um, these are pearl dust beads. So I'm gonna put in some pearl dust beads in there because it's gonna add that shimmer that I'm looking for. All right, but don't put those pearl beads in um, while it's in the oven, you don't wanna do that. Just put, if you're putting jojoba beads or anything like that in there, uh, put them in after they're completely cooled. And in my flower child for my botanicals, I am going to use my calendula petals, okay, and my blue corn flower petals that I just got in. And I don't have an exact weight for these, you guys. I just do it until it looks good. It's just botanicals. So we want to add in some of those of cornflowers. And we'll stir that in and just see where that has us. Okay, so that's essentially what the mixture looks like. You want it to kind of fall out of your hand like that. Now as far as packaging, um, as far as packaging these, you guys, I'm doing this for a specific order, so I will use these tubes, um, and I will fill these tubes up, all right? And they look quite pretty in there, but some of the other packaging options you have, um, you could get a glass jar like this that has, you know, the bamboo lid on top, okay? Um, and do them in there. There's other little containers with cork lids that you could use, okay, that would work. 
Um, I also have, and I mean, there's options like little wooden spoons and stuff like that that you could put with it. Um, and then I have these little bags like this that I use for my gift boxes and stuff like that. Okay, and you could probably order all of this off of Amazon. I got this off of Amazon, um, and these I actually got from the Dollar Tree. Okay, and this is off of Amazon. Um, they're, they're not that expensive, okay, and there's many options. So whatever's working for your branding of your company, but let's get this tube filled up so you can see. Um, what it looks like and you can use a funnel for this, but I just put them in there loose Tap it down So you don't have air pockets Okay, so you guys can see how pretty these look. Okay, simple and easy to make, um, and this won't clump together. It's not going to take my botanicals and make them all brown and gross and ugly looking. They're going to keep the color um, because there's the moisture that was in there from the oils and everything um, has all crystallized. So it's going to stay that way until it hits water and dissolves. And with that polysorbate 80, the oils disperse in the tub nice and evenly. Um, and I'll just put my label on this and I actually do do a shrink wrap seal on here for tamper proof um, protection and simply like that.